This by far is one of the most important tips you need to know to avoid overfilled lips, which is... If you're anxious about getting lip filler, it's completely understandable because there are a lot of botched lips. But before we go any further, I need to let you in on something. Because some of you may be thinking, oh, she obviously has lip filler, but never ever in my life have I ever gotten my lips injected with filler or any other substance. I've always had large, full lips. I do the Botox Lip Flip, which I spoke about in this video. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because having naturally large, full lips has allowed me to really appreciate and study what separates the physical characteristics of natural looking lips versus unnatural looking lips? What's the red flag that goes off in our brain when our eyes come across this look? And this is important to know because if you want your lips to look natural, we want to avoid those red flags. The lips are by far the most over-injected area of the face, which is why so many people have anxiety when it comes to thinking about getting their lips done. So I'm gonna tell you five important tips that you need to know before you go in for lip filler. My philosophy on lip filler and what I tell my patients who get their lips done with me is, after I do your lips, I don't wanna look at you and know you had your lips done. So if that sounds like something you would want, stay tuned because we're gonna talk about the dreaded lip filler migration, ancestry differences, how to avoid lip filler blindness, what to expect after getting lip filler, how long swelling lasts. We'll look at before and after results of a natural looking lip filler enhancement. An example of a progressive enhancement done over three treatment sessions. And another patient who had migration and how we corrected it. We'll talk about how long lip filler lasts, all that good stuff. Ever wonder why lip filler is so ridiculously popular and why botched lips are a pandemic? It's all over. Everywhere I go, I see it at almost every event or if I'm going to the grocery store. But seriously, it's all over. Well, lip filler can seriously make an amazing difference in enhancing someone's beauty. Not only can it put our features into more attractive proportions, making your nose or jawline look smaller, but a big reason that people get lip filler and become obsessed with it is because when you enhance your lips, it adds instant sex appeal. And this actually plays a very important role in sexual dimorphism as women generally have fuller lips than men. Our lips are a sexual and sensual facial feature, and they're also a very sensitive erogenous tactile organ. In an article by The Cut, one anthropologist stated, our lips have a capability for gesture that other body parts simply do not. Another study showed that the lips are the most attractive part of a woman's body and play a critical role in human sexual attraction, which explains why women have been wearing things like lipstick for years. Lips are also a symbol of youth for both sexes because when we're young, our lips are fuller, more defined and voluminous. And as we get older, they lose volume. So taking all this into account that lip filler can enhance someone's beauty, add instant sex appeal, and make you look more youthful? This explains why there are so many botched lip filler jobs because people just don't know when to stop. They think by adding more and more, it's gonna continue enhancing their beauty, but instead, it just ends up making their lips look sausage-like and sometimes ducky, all the other adjectives commonly used to describe botched lips. But why does this happen? Well, if we examine our lip surface anatomy, we'll understand. Our lips are unique and unlike any other feature on our face because they're tubular structures that are bound by very distinctive borders. If we take a look at other facial features, your nose, your cheeks, your jaw, your chin, they're not bound by very distinctive borders. Your lips are completely different and because they're shaped like tubes and because they have such defined and distinct borders. It's so painfully obvious when they're over injected. Which brings us to tip number one. Know that everything in life has a spectrum. Take makeup for instance. Women wear makeup because it enhances our features and makes us look more beautiful. So if we were to look at the spectrum of having no makeup, to having light makeup, to having layers and layers of makeup, you can begin to go too far to the other side of the spectrum where the more makeup you put on, it's not actually improving your look, but you begin to look weird, like you overdid it almost like you're trying too hard because you've gone too far to the other side of the spectrum. That's how it is for cosmetic enhancements. There's a tipping point at which the more you inject, it's not actually enhancing your beauty anymore because your lip tissue begins to take on unnatural looking characteristics, which leads us to rule number two. Respect your unique anatomy and have realistic expectations. Lips come in a variety of different shapes and sizes and ancestry often plays a role in lip size and our upper to lower lip ratios. In general, people of European and Caucasian ancestry tend to have thinner, more retrusive lips with the smallest upper lip volume and an upper lip that constitutes around a third of the total lip volume and a lower lip of around two thirds. 
People of Sub-Saharan African and East Asian ancestries share characteristics of larger lips that are more protrusive because of more soft tissue that surrounds their lips. In people of African ancestry, the upper and lower lip volumes can be nearly the same size or closer to a one-to-one -one ratio. So, with regard to respecting your unique anatomy. As cosmetic injectors, we're like sculptors in that we're dealing with faces which are three-dimensional, but we're not starting off with a blank sculpture, which we can just mold into any lip size and shape you desire. We can only work with what we have. Therefore, if you have very thin lips, I cannot give you Kerry Washington or Angelina Jolie lips. And if I tried, that's where we can get into trouble, which leads us to tip number three. This by far is one of the most important tips or rules to know before getting lip filler which is to avoid the biggest red flag when it comes to unnatural looking lips, which is to avoid the look of induration or hardness. Induration means a localized hardening of the soft tissue of the body where the area becomes firm, but not as hard as bone. This hardness or induration happens when too much filler is placed into the tissue of your lips. That's when they begin to take on these unnatural looking characteristics in which it develops that rolled, hard, stiff looking appearance. Listen closely. I know you may wanna hear that if you just use this specific lip filler product or your injector uses this specific lip filler technique, let's say the Russian lip technique, that you're gonna have natural looking results and migration won't happen, but that's not the case. If you want a natural lip enhancement, it's not about which product you get injected or which particular technique your injector uses. Dr. Rajani spoke about all the hype around lip filler injection techniques, and I have to agree that I think that a lot of the reason you hear all this hype is because there's a lot of financial incentive for cosmetic providers to teach certain techniques that they can attach their names to. But also, sometimes they work as trainers or speakers for these companies that manufacture filler and they can make a lot of money by teaching and training. This is not to say that I don't have fillers that I prefer over others for the lips. I do, I like the softer fillers. And I'm gonna link my favorite ones in the description of this video. The reason I'm not gonna talk about it now is because there's always gonna be new filler brands coming to the market. And if I link my favorite ones in the description, I can always update it as new filler brands come to the market. But the reason I say it doesn't matter which lip filler brand you get injected or which technique your injector uses is because at the end of the day, all of them can cause unnatural looking results and all of them can migrate. So how do you avoid the biggest red flag? This look of induration and hardness. It all boils down to how much volume or how much filler you have in your lips and whether or not your specific anatomy can support that amount of volume. Two ways to avoid the biggest red flag. Don't get injections done in which too much volume is added and don't get lip injections done too frequently. This is precisely why I offer more options for lip enhancements other than one full syringe. One size does not fit all. I don't want people to feel that they have to get an entire syringe at every visit when they get their lips done because most people want to maintain what they have. So if they already have lip filler in their lips and it's not completely gone when they come in for retreatments, I'm often not using an entire syringe. Now, if I need to restore some of the lost volume around the lips that happens with aging, then I need more volume. But just for an enhancement on someone who shows no signs of aging to other areas around the mouth, I rarely use a full syringe. The same thing with getting injected too frequently. If you're getting injected too frequently, you're accumulating too much volume to your lips. Let's address the dreaded migration. Migration is when lip filler spreads or migrates into areas beyond the mammalian border of the lips. It's what some describe as looking like a shelf when people turn to the side. You can see the skin and tissue above and sometimes below has that hard sausage-like appearance. Everyone's concerned with why migration happens. How do I avoid the dreaded migration? Migration is basically over-injected lips because if you put too much product in, where is it gonna go? Remember, the lips are tubular structures bound by very distinct borders. So if you inject too much filler, it has nowhere else to go. So it starts migrating beyond the borders of that person's lips into the surrounding tissue, which basically means you maxed out how much volume that person's lips can handle. And this is really important. For those people who are walking around with overfilled lips, you may be thinking, no biggie, I can just always get my lips dissolved. Thing is with makeup, you can put too much makeup on and just wash it off. You can get a botched hair dye job where all your hair can break off, but at the end of the day, you'll grow brand new hair back. You are dealing with live tissue and you can't grow new lip tissue in the same way. Constantly pushing your anatomy beyond its boundaries to where you're over injecting them can often lead to scar tissue, especially in the lips. 
I've met women and cosmetic injectors who dissolved their lip filler, but the actual lip tissue that they were left with was harder and more firm in appearance than their natural tissue was before, likely because of scar tissue that had formed. So the best thing you can do is prevent your lips from being over injected in the first place, which leads us to tip number four. Avoid lip filler blindness. Let me tell you a very practical scenario of what happens with lip filler blindness. Meet Jane. Jane has thin lips and decided to get lip filler for the first time to enhance her beauty. After her first treatment, like most other people, she was over the moon in love with her lips. It added instant sex appeal, and after a few months, she wanted to go for more. And after the second treatment, she was again overjoy happy, just like the first time. Then, after around three to four months, she did it a third time and falls in love and is so over the moon happy because they're a little more full than the first two times, but the lower lip looks a bit more obvious because it looks rolled and stiff. Jane gets used to how she looks with her new lip size, so then again, she goes in for more lip filler a few months later, but this time it's really apparent that her lip tissue looks weird and it's painfully obvious and now other people notice her lips as it sets off the red flag that something doesn't quite look like natural lip anatomy. Jane started off the way a lot of other women do with her lips, wanting natural looking results, but she got lip filler blindness. Lip filler blindness is real, which is another reason why botched lip filler is a pandemic. It's because our brain normalizes what it's used to seeing. Lip lip filler blindness is what happened to this patient who had been getting her lips done for over 10 years. She got used to seeing herself with a larger upper lip, which became her new norm. And from there, she wanted to go bigger and bigger each time. It's almost like you're trying to chase that same high you got the first few times you get your lips done because it's so beautifying and each time you think you're going to get that same feeling. We're influenced by who we're around. So if you're around people with over-injected lips, that's going to become your new norm and it's going to become normalized to you. So how do you avoid lip filler blindness? Referring back to your baseline pit can be a really helpful way for a person to avoid lip filler blindness, which will cause that person to desire more and more lip filler because they forget what they used to look like. If they continuously desire more and more filler and they don't find the right injector, that can get us into trouble, which leads us to rule or tip number five. Choose the right cosmetic injector. So he came home and he was like, what happened to your lips? Did you do something to your lips? I'm like, no, what are you talking about? <laughs> he said that my upper lip was like flipped up and it looked really funny. He didn't like the look of it. So obviously, I probably didn't go to the right person for that. Remember the saying when you're looking for an injector, don't get high on your own supply. If you have unlimited access to product, what do you do with it? Look at your injector, what do they look like? If their lips look done, they've probably lost sense of what natural lip anatomy looks like and have lip filler blindness, where all sense of normalcy and natural lip anatomy goes out the window. Look at their before and after photos. Do their patients look natural? If you want a natural looking lip enhancement, your cosmetic provider has to have the ability to perceive what natural lip anatomy is and what it isn't. Some cosmetic providers aren't opposed to giving people unnatural looking results, even if they don't think it looks good. But then you have to ask yourself, is that look going to become normalized to them? So if I were you, I would seek out cosmetic providers who specifically provide natural looking results. This lovely young lady found me on YouTube from the Botox lip flip video and she came in to get a lip flip and loved her results and wanted to try a very conservative lip enhancement. As with most lip filler virgins, she was very anxious so we kept it very conservative. As I feel with most lip filler first timers, I have to gain their trust and then when they sit with it for a while, they usually opt for a little more filler a few months later as this other client did. She had two sessions of somewhere around half a syringe each session and this picture shows her progression from the first to the third treatment. This patient had been getting her lips done for over 10 years and every year she'd go in for more lip filler, but this last time she went in, two different injectors declined to treat her when she wanted to get more filler to her upper lip, which tells you repeat treatments have a cumulative effect. And the two injectors who declined treatment likely thought she'd reached her tipping point, but there'll always be someone willing to treat. That's when she noticed the migration, and you can see that firm, indurated, stiff look to the area right above her upper lip. She was always bothered by her upper lip being a lot smaller than her lower one and had the desire to go bigger and bigger to her top lip. So we dissolved her lips with hyaluronidase, and you can see it resolved the induration or hardness here. And if we compare her side profile, you can see just how much her upper lip was sticking out. And here she is two weeks later when we refilled her upper lip and she was very relieved. What should you expect after getting lip filler? It's been, let's see, 12 hours since I got the injections. And you can see that there's a little bit of bruising here. They're tender, but not too bad. I'm definitely swollen up in here because I could tell right when she put it in what they were gonna look like. And then obviously throughout the day, they got a little bit more swollen. 
So it has been one full day since Emily did my lips. There's a little bit of swelling. I covered it up this morning. I went to brunch with some girlfriends and I wore a lipstick and you couldn't tell, but there's still a little bit of bruising here, but not bad at all. I'm so happy. I don't think you would ever know that I had anything done. I love the shape that she gave me. She kind of just made it, gave it a little more of a pouty look. When it comes to lip filler longevity, this question is really difficult to answer because it's not only based on the individual, but it's also based on how much volume was added. For people who have gotten natural looking enhancements, it may last five to six months to a year or longer, but as discussed before, it tends to last longer after cumulative treatments. For instance, if you've been getting your lips done and maintaining it, it can last for years. I've had patients who have gotten pregnant and they couldn't get their lips done for a year and a half, and then they come back and their lips never went back to baseline. With regard to lip filler, longevity and the brand of filler I get this question all the time the newer generation fillers that have more cross-linking are said to last longer in the lips but again don't forget to check the description of this video for more up-to-date information on lip filler brands but if you found this video helpful and entertaining don't forget to like this video share it subscribe to this channel help this channel grow and don't forget to watch these next